we're going to find a basis for the row space of this matrix. That means we're looking for a set of linearly independent vectors that span the row space. That's a basis. This is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is take this matrix A and reduce it to row echelon form. Then the non-zero rows in that echelon form will form a basis for the row space. I won't explain these elementary row operations in detail because you should be pretty familiar with the process, but this is the beginning matrix A, and then here are the steps we take, the elementary row operations, to get it in row echelon form. Just for example, in this first step, we make row two equal to row two minus two copies of row one, and row four, we take and add one copy of row one. That's how we get from here to here. We perform a couple more steps and then we get to row echelon form. It's worth pointing out that this is not reduced row echelon form. It doesn't need to be. For example, this leading one is not in a column of zeros, which it would need to be to be reduced row echelon form. But we don't need it in reduced row echelon form, so we're perfectly fine just stopping here. Remember, once we get our matrix in row echelon form, the non-zero rows form a basis for our row space. So we're pretty much done. We see we've got these three non-zero rows and those three row vectors form a basis for our row space. So these are three linearly independent vectors that together span the row space. to pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Bye. Bye.